All right, she's she's being brave. She's gonna do it. Oh my gosh, I don't I don't feel good about this. Even like the texture of it going through my fork is like kind of gooing me out a little bit. Ugh. Okay, okay, <sighs> gonna do it. Welcome to Peru, everybody. We are in a new city today, Lima, and a new country, of course, and we couldn't be more excited. But first, if you happen to be new around here, I am Trevor, and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to hit subscribe and the little bell to follow along in our adventures. So we're currently in a park. I think it's called Park Kennedy. It's right in the center of Miraflores, which is the area we're staying in. So we have a few dishes in mind today. Hopefully we can find them. Uh, well, we'll see. We did hear a rumor that Peru is considered uh, the food capital of South America, so we're excited to check it out. So the first dish today we are going to try is ceviche. Now when I think of ceviche, Peru does not, definitely not come to the top of mind. I think of like Costa Rica and Mexico, so I was a little shocked when we found out ceviche is such a big dish here. So now we gotta go check it out. All right, so if you guys follow us regularly, you probably know that I'm not a big fish eater like at all. I don't like seafood. I don't particularly like fish, so you're probably wondering what on earth we're doing here. It is one of the things you have to try while you're here. And in the past, I've actually liked ceviche. It's kind of the only fish I've enjoyed. It doesn't have a fishy taste at all, at least the ones we've had in Mexico before. So I'm hoping today will be the same, but we'll see. For those of you that are not familiar with ceviche, it's typically made with fish, white fish, or seafood. We got it with the fish option. Um, it's cooked, sort of cooked, technically, maybe technically cooked in like lime juice. It's the acid that cooks it, so it's raw. Um, I think there's some tiger's milk in there, and I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe you guys can let us know. Uh, it looks like maybe, uh, maybe some pumpkin or something there, and some sort of corn. I could be wrong, and there's onions. Even I'm intimidated by this, so it doesn't look like the ceviche that um, we're used to. It's big, big old chunks of fish. <laughs> so wish us luck. I'm a little intimidated right now. All right, I'm gonna get this in the tiger milk. See if I can get an onion. I'm just gonna go for a big bite, guys. I think this is the way you gotta do it, I hope. Uh, it's good. I don't know why I was scared of that. It's delicious, that fish is so fresh. I mean, we are on the ocean here, on the Pacific Ocean at that, here in Lima, so I don't know why I didn't think it would be very, very fresh fish. It's absolutely delicious. It's so spicy as well. Anna forgot to mention, there are some chilies in there, and with the uh, red onions and things like that, it adds for a bit of crunch, so the fish is very soft and flavorful, and the onions are crunchy and just delicious. I know Anna's scared to try it, but I think you're gonna like it. <sighs> gonna do it, gonna do it. You got this. Texture's really, really soft, so it took me a minute to like figure it out, but there's nothing chewy about it. It just kind of falls apart as you start to chew it. Um, the most things that I taste are um, lime, I think, and the onions, but the onions aren't too strong. There's just a nice texture to it. I like this. Um, I do have to, you know, kind of get my brain into it, but I, I, if, I, if I can get over the raw fish part, I think I'm really gonna enjoy it. We're off to a good start here on dish number one. Yeah. So you don't see that one too often. Anna trying fish on camera. Or off camera for that matter. For the YouTubes. But I make sacrifices for you guys. It's all for you. <laughs> I maybe should do that more often, but we'll see. Anyway, we that was just number one. I know. And it was really good. So I'm excited to try some other stuff. So we're at another place now and Anna's eyeing a menu. And I think we got our sights set on a few things. We do. So this afternoon we actually tried to find some things and everything seemed to either be closed or didn't have what we needed this afternoon. It was only coming out this evening. So I think this has uh, maybe what we were looking for. All right guys, before we get to food, we decided to start with drinks. Pisco, you probably heard of the Pisco Sour, which is what I have here. It's a very, very famous drink here in Peru. So Pisco is a type of liqueur or a spirit that they make here. I think it's maybe a brandy. So the Pisco Sour, which is what I got, is made with um, Pisco. Lime juice, I believe, uh, some sweetener, so like some simple syrup, and egg whites, which would make that frothy little stuff. 
and some bitters. Well, it sounds really good. You sold me, but let's see how it tastes. Really good, nice hot weather drink. It's very refreshing with that lime juice in it. Pisco, I have no idea what it tastes like on its own, but I sort of taste a little bit of like tequila, but ever, ever so slightly, because I don't really like tequila. So it's like there's a second of that kind of flavor. I don't know what you even call that, but then it's gone and it's super refreshing. Okay, the first dish has uh, arrived to the table. Anna's got her hand out to show how massive this thing is. What is this? I don't, well, so this is a starter. We thought it was going to be super tiny. Uh, I'm going to read it off the menu because I will never remember this. So it's called Casa La Menia. Uh, it's cold and spicy mashed potatoes with avocado, egg, tomato, and mayonnaise, and then it has sauces and chicken. But it's huge! It's massive! I thought it would be tiny. I'm ready. I'm gonna try it. Do you know what? The, if you're an American or Canadian, do you know what this reminds me of? Is like in the summertime having um, potato salad. It totally tastes like that. It's got potatoes. It's got that mayonnaise flavor. It totally tastes like that. So weird. Uh, it doesn't look like the potato salad that I'm used to. But it tastes like it. It kind of looks like birthday cake. Okay, I got a dish that's incredibly popular here in Peru. It's called anti-cuchos, I believe. Um, it looks like steak, but it's not steak at all. This is cow heart. I'm very nervous about this dish. <laughs> so far today, I've been very nervous about all the dishes. I'm hoping it tastes like the steak I know and love, but um, I've never had cow heart, not even once. So I ordered this to be medium well, and he recommended that because it's not meat. Normally I go for medium rare, but when I'm doing a cow heart, I, I, I'm gonna listen to them and say, let's go medium well. I'm, I'm a little nervous. Okay. It's chewy. It's chewy like a medium well steak. And it, my brain is telling me it's steak. I'm not thinking that this is a cow heart. But my mind is telling me this is a cow heart. And that is playing tricks on me. It tastes like steak. So this is the thing. And this is what I wanted to try. I, I love a good steak. And this tastes like a good steak. It's just cooked um, a little, uh, it's, it's too well done for my, for me. Because I, again, I go back to, I like medium to medium rare. But they did say this is not beef, it's a heart. I'm eating a heart right now. I'm eating a cow heart right now. So my dish is called ashi, ahi de galina. So it's a type of stew, it's a traditional Peruvian stew. We got chicken, we have ahi, which I think is like a, um, Kind of a spicy um, pepper that you find here. Some rice, it's got some eggs, it's got some uh, olives, which I will not be eating. Uh, but yeah, it's a stew basically. So it's got some chicken and I'm gonna give it a go. Okay guys, I'm totally into this. This has my name on it. This was made for me. Uh, it's so a chicken dish. It's got like this creamy, peppery thing. So ah, aji, ahi. It's a, like, it's kind of, I think it's a Peruvian pepper, because we see this aji, ahi uh, spice everywhere. It's got a little bit of spiciness to it, um, but it's, it, it is like very much a stew, but it's just like very homey, very yummy, easy to eat. It's really good. I'm totally into this. Two, three, four, but five thumbs up. I don't have that many thumbs, so two thumbs up for me. Alright guys, that was really, really delicious. However, we've been in some fairly inexpensive places such as Colombia. This feels really, it was really expensive. It feels like being at home in Canada. Um, so we paid a boat, I feel like it came to like 90 Canadian dollars for that, which is really expensive. We're in Miraflores. Yes. So maybe it's just the area we're in or is it just Lima? Is Lima that expensive? Guys, I'd love if you're from here to let us know. Or did we just pay a whole lot of money for that or is that typical for this area? Oh, you guys. 
Well, look at these things. They look like onion rings, but they're not at all. All right, guys, success. We got our picharons or picharones, whatever they're called. Um, so they're actually deep fried and they're made out of like either like sweet potato or squash or something like that. They actually smell like pumpkin pie to me. So they smell like Thanksgiving, but they're like deep fried. They look like onion rings and they smell like pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie onion rings. Explain that to me. Sounds like something we're gonna like. Mm -hmm. mm. Really light, fluffy, kind of tastes like Thanksgiving, but not that sweet. And then they have that like kind of drizzle on top. Hmm, I'm fascinated. Okay, my turn and I'm so excited. In my mind, just like the uh, cow heart, I expect an onion ring taste. Oh, it's caramely. Like it tastes a lot like caramel. It's buttery. There's like a hint of a churro. Did you find that? I feel I find there's like a little bit of a churro going on, like a Mexican churro. It's really good, but it's it's the flavor isn't like full force. It's like a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of that churro taste. It's it's slightly donny and slightly caramelly. It's almost like they're afraid to put like full on flavor into it, but I do like them. But I'm not gonna lie, I would like if there was a little more flavor into these. But they're pretty good, and they're a very good way to end this incredible day of Peruvian food. Wow, what a way to kick off a new country, and especially here in Peru. Uh, not gonna lie, we're a little bit shocked at the food here so far. We didn't expect to eat, the like ceviche? I didn't expect to get ceviche. I don't know how this one um, convinced me to try cow heart. But overall, so far we're having a good time. I wouldn't be shocked if we go out and try some more food in another video. But yeah, I think maybe knows? we will. We're a little surprised about the prices here, so uh, it's a little more equivalent to what we would pay at home in Canada or the US. Uh, so we're curious at people that have either been here before or that are from here. Is this yes. normal for Peru or is it just Miraflores, the area we're in? It could be the we're area. Curious. Um, yeah. If you're not from here, expect to pay prices that you would pay yeah. um, back in your own home country. Yeah. Now we're 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 stacking that up against like Colombia, Mexico, mm -hmm. Poland, like some of the places we've recently um, been, right? Right. But last we were actually in Colombia. We were in uh, Medellin, and our last video, if you haven't checked it out. We actually talked about how we afford to travel yes. and uh, inexpensive places that we go in order to do this, do what we do. So like Medellin was a really good example. Absolutely. We talked about all the you know costs of being there and it was a lot less expensive so far than being here. So yeah, yeah it's an interesting and example. The next video is going to be a lot of fun because we're going to go out exploring this beautiful city of Lima, Peru a little more and we can't wait to get up to that. All right guys, that's it. From Lima, Peru, wishing you delightful travels. See you soon.